my name is Tope Akindele. Uh, a few people call me Tope. I immigrated to Canada and I've always lived in Edmonton ever since. Uh, though I've visited a few cities and provinces within Canada, but this is my home. This is where I love. No matter how people feel, it's cold and all that. I, I love the city. My photography journey started way back when I was in Nigeria. I'm originally from Nigeria and uh, I initially started drawing, painting abstract images. Uh, but when I picked up the camera about 25 years ago, I fell in love with it because I just felt it's a different way of expressing myself, of capturing uh, images and documenting stories as well. I started off shooting events like parties, then I moved to portraits for people. Then I used to do some landscape. And I like to do night landscape as well. I think I've been drawn into being able to express myself well when the image, when, when the picture is dark. And we have sparks of colors, you know, just those bouquets of colors in them. Rather than just having a daytime shot. Anybody can take a camera and shoot in the sunlight and it. But just to push myself a little more, I always like to play with light, um, paint with light as well. Since I'm no longer sketching and drawing and painting anymore, so I try to paint with light, infusing some gel in my light just to make it colorful. And uh, recently I've been working on compositing, uh, bringing multiple images from different sources. Some might be from stock images and some might be my original images. And I combine them together just to create this surreal type uh, photograph uh, to make it more artsy. The surreal type images for me, uh, I got pulled in by, as I said earlier, watching movies and watching some musical videos and also seeing other people's work. Uh, the beautiful thing about the world now is we're all connected somehow with the internet so you can see other people's work even if it's just someone else's painting uh, the, the way they're able to represent it the way they're able to represent a simple image of a human being and light hitting them on both sides and on all sides and just creating something that is surreal and for me I, I got pulled into it because I feel it's more appealing and it looks magical it looks out of this world. You know, sometimes when you have your camera and you want to take photos, tell me, how many times can you have a butterfly flying and you're snapping, you know, taking the shot at the same time and being able to reflect, you know, how the butterfly is and maybe the light from the butterfly. And I don't, I don't even know how many butterflies glow, you know. <laughs> so, but in some of the images I create, I try to make things like butterflies glow. Uh, try to make floating dust glow. Try to make little glowworm insect also glow brighter. And I used one image from the ones that will be on the exhibit. Uh, it's a jellyfish and the jellyfish was flowing. Jellyfish belongs to the sea, but I have this one floating in the hair, you know, in a garden and it's glowing. It's just something to quick people's imagination. It's not real, it's fantasy, but Taking them from the reality, from where we are, and being able to tie that fantasy to it as well. It makes people think, how did he do this? What was he thinking doing this? And I said, as I said, I said, some of them have some subtle message behind them, you know, like aspiration, like knowledge, like a quest for more knowledge, you know, education, um, trying to learn about other people trying to defeat our biases by learning about other people's culture and religion and about who they are, their languages and all that, the food they eat. We are all human, so we should be able to understand each other and not just let hate continue to be fueled amongst us. So I just want to bring something out that will make people get engaged and ask questions. How did you do this? Why did you do this? What were you thinking? Things like that. Though I've been shooting when I was in Nigeria, been doing a few commercial shoots and some family portraits and a little bit of landscaping. But when I got to Canada, it's a little bit different. You know, you have to build your client base, you have to build your network. So 
but I started with my friends and a few people that I know and ever since it's taken off. But well, recently I started experimenting and started playing around with lights, you know, trying to create a different kind of identity uh, for my photography style. And a few people that have seen my work will notice that I like dark photography a lot. Something dark with a little bit of image popping up. When I picked the camera for the first time, if I can remember, it should be almost 25 years ago. So, yeah, 25 years ago. Initially, truly, I, I started off as uh, someone who likes to sketch and draw and paint a little bit. But I found out that I wasn't really good in rea realism, you know, painting something that looks like real human or real still life. So I gravitated towards abstract painting, abstract sketching and just making use of monochromes and stuff like that, you know. But when I picked up the camera, as I said, like 25 years ago, I got stopped. I got hooked on it. I just loved it. And if you remember 25 years ago, the digital space wasn't, the, it wasn't digital camera then. It was more of the analog. You can't shoot and review your shot immediately. You take your pictures, you take it for development, then gets it printed out. So even if you have errors, <laughs> you won't know until you actually printed them out. So then I used to bracket a lot of my shot, you know, changing my high shows, changing my uh, f-stops, changing my speed all the time for one image just to be able to get what I want. And, but as I said, I got stuck after shooting a little bit with camera and I think that was why I lost my touch about you know sketching and even doing abstract painting now. I so much depend on the camera to do all the capturing and trans translation of what I'm thinking in my head for me. And good thing we have Photoshop to also you know help with some of the editing and that's where my compositing come in. You know bringing those images out from the camera and putting it on the computer on Photoshop and trying to recreate something from it. Most times I have a concept, I have an idea, something I've thought about, even prior to the shoot. So when I'm doing the shoot, I'm trying to incorporate those things that I'm thinking in my head. As I said, it's more of compositing, you know, bringing in other things into my image. Um, like some that you'll see during the exhibitions, you'll see butterflies, you'll see um, water jelly, a jellyfish. You see uh, things like floating dusts, you know, stuff like that, just to create this surreal effect, as I said. So before even taking the shot itself, I have a concept in my head. But when I now sit down to do the photoshopping part of it, that's where I try different things. You know, maybe initially I was just thinking it will be a ray of light coming from here. But when I start editing, it could be something else. It could be a floating animal, you know, it could be uh, a ray of light mixed with dust, you know, just to, to create that ambient, to create that mood that I want the image to look like at the end of the production. So, also try to make it look 3 d as well by superimposing some images in front of my subject and blurring them out just to create a kind of dimension. So when you look at it, it's not just flat. You can see something is be you know in front of the object, the main subject, and something is usually behind them as well. So it's been it's been really really good for me to sit down and think about stuff you know out of the ordinary and see how I can bring them out to life. Three words to describe my work is um, it might not be perfect or accurate at this point, but what I could think of bringing up this question, I would say. Um, mood, uh, I'll say darkness, and I'll say um, attraction, you know, mood, darkness, attraction, it's kind of uh, contrasty if you think about it because mood could be happy, you know, darkness most times people ascribe it to melancholic feeling when you're not feeling really happy yeah and sometimes I create my best work when I'm not really feeling happy as well so that's why I said dark <laughs> it's part of it and attraction is at, at, the end of, at the end of the production at the end of the creativity process people will always want to look at it you know they want to engage with it and that's the attraction part of it as well
I create fantasy settings. Um, some of them came from within and some from other people's work as well, you know. You, I go on the street, I open magazines, I watch movies, I watch some musical videos and I see things in it. Sometimes I feel I see things that people are not seeing. Uh, we are, we're having a movie, we're watching a movie, having fun. I'm not even following the storyline anymore. I'm following the light. I'm following what's happening, you know, how it was created. Who thought about that, you know, how and how they eventually created this. And I want to do it. Sometimes I, I'll post uh, a movie that I'm watching on TV or a musical production and I'll take a screenshot of it. I'll just take a picture of it on my phone so that I remember. I send it to myself and I'll see if I could recreate that similar lighting, that mood that I'm talking about. Surely it sounds as if I'm a dreamer. Um, you know, sometimes when you're in the creative space, you you might be sitting down and alive and people are talking around you, but you're far away thinking about other things too. So my mind is always juggling around a lot of things sometimes. Because I just want to do a lot, you know. Sometimes you just feel there's no time. Can't we just crunch in everything within this short time and get it done, you know. So my mind is always flickering like that and I always want to be able to produce something. Voila! And it's done. So, as I said, this is one of the things uh, that I've always thought about in my head, having someone in a dreamy state thinking about their favorite music in a surreal environment where we have a big tree behind you and a fairy looking butterfly flying towards you, glowing the blue light on, on our cheek and also the gloriousness of whatever the music is coming from, the light shining and hitting our face from that direction as well. So if you look at it, you'll be able to see it's not just flat. We can see dimension in the whole image. Uh, the curves on our faces, the light balances, and also some kind of leafy on the foreground, and also the tree on the background, just to create that 3D effect of multi-layers. <laughs> multi Where I see my, my craft going, uh, where I wish my craft go, is uh, to be able to exhibit more, to be able to showcase my work more, uh, to be able to develop my work more as well, you know, be able to conceptualize some of them and be able to produce it the way I've conceptualized it, even if it's not as accurate, but something very close. Build on it so that when people see my work, they will be able to say that's some of this work. You know, there's a way your work has a signature on it, the style, and you don't even have to put your name on those images, but people will know when they see that this looks like one of the production from Top End. This is my first exhibition. Uh, I hope it won't be the last. I am hoping that I will be able to do more and create more. Though, uh, it's, it can be busy. Life can be very busy sometimes. And Sometimes the creative uh, <laughs> um, gene in you is not actually functioning at, at its optimal. Maybe because of life, you know, whatever is going on at that time. But really, I'm hoping that I should be able to create more and exhibit more of my work with other artists as well, collaborate with other artists and be able to showcase what we have going on, learn from them as well for whatever they do to influence my work and what I do to influence that, their work as well. As I said, one of my hope is someday little kids on the street, little kids uh, or other kids that looks like me will be inspired to be like, I want to be like him. I want to, or I want to do something that looks like what he's done as well. But we never can tell. Most of the things we do today, during the days of Picasso, they just went ahead and they were doing stuff. They never knew that over a thousand years after, you know, people will still be talking about them or close to a thousand years. So that's the kind of thing I'm hoping, even if it's not going to be people talking about my work for 500 years to come, but really, even if it's just for 10 years after I'm gone, you know, let them have conversations about my work, let it impact other people, let it support them to be able to do something. I got a few of my inspiration from some photographers in Nigeria as well, some young body, you know, young photographers and they're quite talented. I do artistry, 
uh, King Smile, My Lord Shot, you know, a few of them like that, but they create very well and they are able to, to impact other people too. And as I said, some of them stuck to their style of photography and yeah, they've had critics say, why do you create this type of image all the time, you know, on social media, you know, people like to beat each other down on social media, you know, but um, they don't allow it to stop them. And that's for me too. I won't allow what people, the comments people post on my images to, to stop me from going on and on and having this concept of this idea of similar looking images and producing tons and tons of it. Because it's part of my work, it's part of my style and I shouldn't be embarrassed creating what I feel. My journey, uh, um, me meeting Alexis, uh, I don't think it was an error. I don't think it was a mistake. I don't think, I think it was destined because uh, it just happened like magic in January. I was just thinking about, you know, putting up an exhibition. I wanted to do it by myself, no matter how, <laughs> you know, even if it doesn't look professionally put together. But I stumbled across her, you know, while I was searching and called her out. Lo and behold, she was very receptive, which I wasn't expecting, you know, but this is someone you've never met before and you're trying to explain yourself and trying to tell um, about what you want to do. And she accepted to, to work with me on this and I appreciate it. And as I said, it's not an error, it's destiny and I hope destiny will lead us to a good place. Yeah, I'm a photographer by night, though I have a day job, I do something else during the day. Um, I'm a business analyst and an IT project manager a practitioner. And what that means is we, we help to build solutions for companies, for organizations, uh, when it comes to improving their processes and how they can infuse technology to improve their productivity, their processes, and efficiency as well. So that's part of the things I do during the day. Working as a business analyst uh, of IT, uh, person, you know, uh, actually gives me a little bit of leverage in the way I interact with my my systems, my computers, and also some of the applications I use, like Photoshop, and sometimes I use other applications like Picasa. Without having so much training on them, I could navigate some of the menu because I just try, you know. As I used to say, I tell people, I'm self-trained as a photographer. I've learned all through my journeys, through errors, trials, you know. But I think my day job also influences it because when you work on the screen a lot of times, you you learn new new stuff. So my ability to be able to learn new things, it's it's always there, you know, I'm always thinking about new ways to make things easier, even for myself, because if I help other organizations work efficiently, I should be able to look for a way to make my work easier too. So, and that's where I said, I bring in images from stock, you know, some stock images and use them in some of my work. Instead of having to say, I have to go take a picture of a moon that I will use in my image, it already exists somewhere. You know, I can just copy that and use that as part of what I'm building for myself. That is not, there's no copyright infringement in that because I'm taking something and recreating other things with it. Digital collage, it has so many names. I know the fancy name is, we call it compositing, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> it's part of uh, one of the styles of photography. And for, my, for myself, I'm a kind of generalist. I try to do everything and as I said I do events too, weddings, uh, milestone birthdays. Those ones pay me immediately, you know, they are quick gratifying kind of jobs. But when I do some of my expressions, creative, uh, artistic creative uh, creativities, those ones doesn't translate into money immediately. It's more of like showing what you're capable of doing. And as a creative too, I've never considered myself great, you know, or good at what I do. And I think it's not just me. It happens to a lot of people in the creative space. We always feel that our work is not better enough because maybe we've seen other people's work and we feel overshadowed by those ones. But I encourage everyone and I encourage myself too. Whatever you've done for yourself is good enough. Your best is good enough. 
So whatever you're having and you're creating and you're keeping, don't keep it to yourself, bring it out. And someday people will understand you and they will understand your work the way it is. And, and that, that's the journey I'm on right now. I put my work out there, I'm about to put my work out there for people to see, for people to criticize. If it's good enough for me, it's good enough for me. That's all. <laughs> when people come to see my work during the exhibition, when they walk into the gallery, um, I'm hoping, because you can't really engineer people's feelings and emotions too, so, <laughs> but I'm hoping they will be engaged and they will be able to look at stuff and interpret it to what they feel. I don't even have to give them my own interpretation, though all the artwork will have a name, but they can own it and rename it the way they feel or what they perceive it to be like. Just as the theme of the exhibition says, uh, light and darkness, uh, we're gonna shine light on things that we think are darkness. Uh, we're gonna shine light on mis misunderstanding, misconstrued emotions, misconceptions. Misconceptions uh, from what we call some kind of cognitive biases. You know, we all are different, the way we look, the way we talk, what our culture, uh, the way we worship and things like that. But if you don't know about other people's culture, about other people's religion, about other people's background, we tend to misunderstand them. We tend to, because of the biases we all have, you know, we tend to misunderstand them. So I'm hoping that because I have one of the glorious image there uh, of um, an Islamic uh, Muslim lady, you know, also happy to receive the light, also, you know, trying to receive the light. And from a distance, when, you know, on the news, sometimes you hear about some homophobic type attacks and some Islamophobic type attacks. And I just want to address that with that image that we need to get to know ourselves, that we worship the same God, we, we bleed the same blood, and we, we have kind of the same value, even if we speak different languages, and that's just all. We need to understand each other, learn about that thing that you think you're scared about, that you don't know, and the more you know, the better you become as well. And when people walk in, I'm hoping they will be able to see some of the images and see things like hope, things like beauty, things like um, love.
Uh, Tobe is a Nigerian-born artist currently in Edmonton, but has explored many aspects of the world, has done photography in many different parts of the world. He used many art forms until he came upon his passion for photography. But Tobe's artwork is more than just photography. He creates dreamlike landscapes and utilizes the fantastical and whimsical with his subjects. Photography is all about light, and Tobe paints with light, bringing his visual stories to life through many layers of imagery. You can see that all in his work here tonight, uh, the exhibit called Light and Darkness. And at this time, I would like to welcome Tobe to the floor to tell us about his art. Start with a quote from Anton Martin. Uh, is, this quote actually helps to bring light to the darkness about the theme of uh, this exhibition today. And he reads If we never experience the chill of dark winter, it is very unlikely that we will ever cherish the warmth of a bright sunny day. Nothing stimulates our appetite for simple joys of life more than the starvation caused by sadness and desperation. In order to complete our amazing life journey successfully, it is vital that we turn each and every dark tears into pearls of wisdom and find blessings in every curse of our hope. Embracing your, your, your pain and embracing your sorrow because we feel pain and we feel sorrow almost the same way. But we don't do it. And really, the last two years have shown us a lot with the pandemic. We lost a lot of people, loved ones. At the same time, some of us were sick, we lost the energy. And some of us actually almost lost our minds too. Yeah, but we're still here. And that's part of the light and darkness that we're talking about. We're still here. We still find reason to rejoice. We came out from that burning fire. And we're rising like the things once again. So I started reflecting on lots of things, you know, and found out that life itself, the journey we are on, the one we call good and evil, black or white, light or darkness, joy and pain, they are all similar kind of emotion. It's just on the spectrum. So you might be on this end today feeling so much joy. We might be on this end some other time, feeling not so high. But you just be in the middle of all the we are right now. But I want you all to know that with every darkness, there's a light path to it. No matter how dark uh, your days are, there will always be another day that will light, uh, that the light will shine down on you and it will be brighter than the moon. Also, I have a piece here that talks about if you don't have anything good to say. <laughs> because during the pandemic too, in as much as people were feeling so much pain, we still have people that were trying to pull things down and pull them down. In my head I'm like, oh God, can we just hush? So when you go around and you see some of the names are kind of, the pulls you in, you'll be able to get what I'm trying to convey with the work, with the names. Some of them might be a little complex, but I'll talk to it when you ask me. I might not be able to go around and punch them one after the other. And the one behind you over there, okay. That one too is one of my favorites. It has to be why. That little angel, so in the book, really, there's a stereotype. Uh, if you want to hide something from the black man, the black people, put it in the book. <laughs> yeah. That one is addressing that stereotype. It's all lies. It's all lies. And uh, that shows the power of our girls. Over here, after she's now in 19, she's happy. She became supernatural. That's the future. There's no way I'll sit around us without saying thank you. Uh, to all of you once again, Stony Plain is far <laughs> 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 Exactly, with a tulip 